Well, so I do think this is a really cool use of technology, um, but I also think that that's a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I live in South Shore, which is probably the most economically polarized community area in Chicago now that the green is gone. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, we have a lot of projects that I, you know, need or a lot of, of issues that could be addressed through a process like this. Mm -hmm. But we also have a large population who would never reach this. Um, have you given thought to how that would play out in, in, in a community like that? Um, because of what age or because of? Uh, because of age, we do have a large senior citizen population. We also have a very large low income population. They may not have internet access at home. They may only use feature phones. Right. Um, so two pieces on the age thing. Uh, we, we recognize all of this, and we also realize we're not going to solve all of this. Um, we're not going to replace community means. I have no interest in that, but I, I would like to replace community means as the catch-all. I'd like to turn community meetings, my vision would be to turn them into task forces that have specific things that they focus in on as opposed to everybody line up and do it. <coughs> That's what it's very of grievances. Very rarely going on. Um, on the age thing, what we have done is um, opened it up for those to start campaigns. Um, there's a paper process. If they can go door to door, they send it in to us. We pull that in there. Yeah, I, I can't imagine an Altman, you know, seeing a bunch of folks that, uh, register for our site and seeing one demographic and missing the rest and then treating it seriously. Um, language, that's something that we run up against. Um, we haven't built it yet, but there's you know, the translation piece. Um, on the economic side, one, one of our mentors in the program, shown there by the city models, is John Tolva. Um, he actually gave our, our intro a demo day. And he's not only has he been great with the data, but he's also been an advocate for, yeah, I love 1871, it's great, but we've also got these libraries that we're trying to figure out what their future is and the potential for our public libraries to serve as neighborhood incubators and in places where this data can be opened and free to the public. And if you're a citizen in Chicago, you can go in and check things out. Um, encouraging people to use technology there, um, which is available, or, you know, if not, um, the kind of thing that hasn't been built that's in the pipeline is um, you know, texting groups that they work. You don't have a smartphone, but you do have a phone that's texting and um, still participate in some ways. Anything else? Somebody? Um, fantastic presentation. Thank you. Oh, thanks. I, I have a question about it. seems that for opportunities that are kind of enmeshed in a part of us that require this sort of like teasing out and the visualization to be understood and then propose an opportunity, like that's your context. Um, but I live in the Urban Park, Albany Park area, yep. and we would love it if we could get rid of the Latin Kings. So <laughs> there's no issue with knowing what the problem is. And there's no issue with kind of galvanizing support around some opportunity. So I'm just wondering, it just seems like, if, I'm just wondering how you were addressing um, issues in neighborhood life that are not unknown, that are known, that there's another reason why they're not being. Right. I, I think, yeah. So, one, one thing that um, we want to avoid, and as another means of differentiating ourselves from those other sort of competing but not really entities out there, is that we don't want to be a catch all for, we don't want to be 311 calls. If somebody put graffiti on the side of a building, we, we don't want that to come through. So we focus in on the built environment. So when you create a campaign from scratch, grassroots, Joe Blow does it, um, it, you have to focus in on a building, a street, a park, or a plaza to get people. That's how you start out this process. So it's focused on the three dimensional. Now, if it has to do with a lot that a lot things figured out the way that that's the place to be or whatever and that's we use architecture planning and design to combat that and we build that lot the rest of man if we could just get them to move out of that space or whatever um, that would be a way to use this but we won't be able to solve all the social ills and I, I think that's something that architects and planners have failed at since the days of we're not, <laughs> not going to solve it with a plan it has to be so much more than it's a piece of it it's not all of them, so I don't ever want to think this is 
the silver bullet and throw it in the nails on it. I just, um, I had a thought in response to your comments there. Um, there's a, oh, somewhat similar, but other similar site called Community Planet that's been deployed in um, a community development, maybe you can bring it up, Chris, um, it's been deployed in Community Planet, P-L-A-N-I-T. It's been deployed in uh, community development campaigns, but it's, um, it, it sort of allows, um, I'm oh, sorry, P-L-A-N-I-T. Oh. <laughs> That's why I Google this. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I-T. Um, it's been, so it, it aggregates um, a sort of the data around the same kind of campaigns. I think they've used it for school reform issues, but also for looking at urban development in the built environment. And, um, but I think that they've experimented with with using it on a tablet and doing it in a more sort of traditional community organizing way where you're um, collecting, sort of knocking on doors and collecting data in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and they, there's some gamification features and there's also like, a lot of data visualization features. That's right. um, but it might kind of address the comment about how do you how do you work with people across the digital divide? Because you don't want to have one space that's about community inclusion and then create another space about community inclusion, but lose the that's, that's, yeah. that's absolutely great. Um, thank you uh, for this. And, and one thing I, I mentioned at the very beginning uh, was the idea that, that young people, you know, the picture of me with my hand pulled up way too high, uh, <laughs> didn't have a place to go with his ideas, whether they were good or not. Um, but one thing that, you know, we have a generation that may not be connected and we'll try to feed it into the heads that they should, but then you've got a young crowd right now that's using technology and we can introduce them to something that they then they can be a generation that just grows up knowing that this is what you do, because you're engaged in your life. So this is something that produces results. Um, so we're working with, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the school, Chicago Quest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, and they, they have one classroom that's about <coughs> taking uh, the students through the processes of neighborhood development design. And we're going to be working with them uh, in the fall, that semester. Uh, using our platform as part of their assignment work, um, that not only will they propose ideas and then budget it and do all those things, but they'll actually have to get by and from their neighbors first. Um, last year they had some, some kids come up with the ideas of putting roller coasters down their street. <laughs> uh, maybe, one of the, maybe that's a different um, um, way of, I don't know, maybe the CTA would be interested in that. But, um, <laughs> um, probably not too realistic, but bringing them down to understanding what's good for their neighbors as well as their own imagination as well. Yeah. Uh, taking a look at the Civic Artwork site, I saw that you have um, phase one brainstorm, phase two analysis, phase three illustration. Uh, we have content on them, ideas, polls, and I haven't seen what goes on illustration, but I'm guessing it's proposals or something along those lines. Um, there we go. Uh, where do each of those come from? Are they strictly provided by um, community? Are they provided partially by community, partially by uh, civic leaders or consultants? How much collaboration is there in developing them? Is it sort of like GitHub where everyone pulls in and creates a wiki-like final version, or is it just one person puts something up there and people all downvote it? So the, um, that's a great question. Um, the, the brainstorm and the ideation phase is entirely up to community members. Um, from, it, it's anything, they, they've got a blank sheet of paper. Um, we prompt them with the problem, but we don't provide any indication of the solution. Where does um, the problem come from? Now, that would be a, a client. Uh, so if you okay. use Wabash, for instance. Okay, so each of those uh, sites is considered a problem. Yes, okay. yeah. So they're trying to solve some issue. Um, and so they, they, they come up with all their ideas and crowdsource that piece. The ideas that rise to the top um, are the ones that um, we take a close look at. Um, we do not discount the ones on the bottom because they typically inform the ones that go to the top. Um, but then the next piece, uh, for instance, with Wabash, if you look, then the analysis is where we dig in a little bit deeper as designers and planners trying to get at the solution that we can. For instance, um, everybody thought that Wabash should be better lit. 
from those that are riding their bikes down at night to those that are taking care of some sort of danger at night walking the line. So we would ask the question, well, you want to light it. Um, what do you want to light first? Because there are a lot of ideas on what we would like and have fun with it. Um, do you like yellow tracks at the intersection, or do you just throw a bunch of light up on the building like Air Man wants to do with all the city of light thing? Kind of <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, it's so strange. I mean, we announced that you know, right when Paris, the, the city of lights, says so they're going to start turning this off. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's cool. But, um, but yeah, so and then the polls are our next step. And then it's always open to people ask for the questions and that type of thing. We don't close anything off the general public. Um, but then the illustration, you know, it's an iterative phase. Can you guys do that? You guys do the illustrations? We do. We do, um, you know, a little bit of business insight. You know, the impact engine team wants us away from that. It's not damn scalable. Yeah, I was wondering about scalability, but that's like a differentiator, right? Like, it is. could you outsource that to some other? Yeah, some. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And we struggle with that. I, I think too with some of the um, the data visualization that maybe some of the folks in this room are doing. Um, that an illustration doesn't have to necessarily be like that intersection. It can also be like you know, the contest that you had. Um, just a month and a half ago with Divi mm -hmm. to illustrate that data in a meaningful way. I think that was fantastic, and that's just as useful. Um, so if it's doing the work for you, the data and whatever technology that you put on the back end to make it something uh, consumable, then we don't have to sit behind it and say that building elevation, you know, three stories red brick, this type of coarsening and all that type of detail. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Is that in that Code for America app? Is it Street Mix or something like that? It lets you, like, people, like, design. Mine. Oh, uh, yeah, Street Mix. Yeah, have you heard of this uh, before? It's like, it lets anybody, like, it's kind of like I have a palette of things you can put and design your own street. Awesome. Uh, and you can add, like, oh, I want to make a bike lane, or I want to, like, add, you know, this and that or the other. Um, and so it's like a powerful tool that lets the, anybody, like, go in yeah. and, like, add stuff in, right? But with, like, uh, a set of choices that you can make, right? Which is which is awesome. Right. Yep. Yeah, here it is, yep. right? And you can save your streets, yeah. which is why this is still existing. And this yeah. was, um, is this Frank? No, that's open right? plans. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I can remove that. Right. Can right. replace that with a. Uh, I love this stuff. Yeah, it's kind of fun, right? Like, I honestly think it's kind of a toy, but like in the right context, maybe having conversations around this like, yeah. with your guys' platform, that seems like something like this, right? Absolutely. Could be a potential. It would take me, um, you know, when I worked for HOK or fill in the blank firm, um, it would take hours, if not weeks, to bounce around how this should be done based on what somebody did here or somebody did there. Yeah. And you certainly need that expertise, but what Christopher's doing right now is I mean, you're just having fun. Enough you know, people are having fun. We did this not too long time. Anyway. Yeah, so the code for that's all open source. Awesome. Yeah. Oops. So it seems like a lot of what you're trying to do is to get people to think creatively about places, mm -hmm. which is something we don't always do. We kind of do a casually like live around place for up. I wish it was like a sweet ass stop on this block. Yeah. Um, have you thought of using or more like what are the three out? What are your thoughts on using physical places as both hooks into the app uh -huh. and uh, context setting for the stuff? Just like you know, like, could this block be different? Think about how this block could be different. Yeah. So um, I think yeah. I, I, that would be awesome I, if I got it right. One thing that we're trying to do with a developer client is that they're interested in transit during development throughout Chicago, and they've got, let's say, hypothetically 10 sites that they think would be prime candidates based on their performer. And they employ us to create a place for the public to go, and they work with that municipality in each of those 10 to um, get the rights to just plunk a blank billboard in the ground, which is what we hope to do, and just put up the this, and then everybody contributes, and that developer finds out which one is hanging through this. Oh, we love this, we love this, we love this. Mm -hmm. 
um, versus a community that would find out, or a different community would say, no, we hate this, we hate this, we hate this. Well, the developer then knows I'm not going from there and not there. And I've just saved myself a lot of money, putting any time into the one that doesn't want. Um, now, that's a, that's how them, the developer, and their interests would work. But just doing that for, you know, I know there was the vacant lot. Um, they were speaking a few weeks ago. Um, the idea of just going down an at-risk street that is just crucial to the to the, to the life of one neighborhood and saying boom, 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 what should we do? Um, so you know, cool. is, is that kind of what you're Yeah, thinking? exactly. You yeah. get people when they're there. Yep. Well, and then um, to see it. I think I've had actually experience where you go home, your laptop, you the website, oh. the website. It's that it's like, it's literally in the comments, I think it's different from the model. Yes. Yeah, well, and then the, the thought that, like when I showed you the different iterations of the rendering, that if each one of those is pictured, and then you're driving to work, walking to work, walking to work, whatever, um, that you're seeing it changed in the course of a week or so. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So I'm just going to uh, just try to understand what your value proposition is for people who actually pay you money. But, uh, it seems like, looking at this, it seems like that the value proposition is, is that they're going to, that they're like, by engaging in the public, they're going to be able to get the, they're going to be able to make a more persuasive case to elected officials for the kinds of changes that they want. Maybe they'll also get better ideas, but they already are coming to you with some general outline of what they want and they See that this is a potential tool that help them accomplish mm -hmm. their goals. Um, so it seems like a premise of this site is, is that the way to do that is to engage the public and demonstrate to elected officials that regular people are interested in these changes. Mm -hmm. Have you? What's your sense on the validation of that of that business proposition? Is that do you think have you found that to be true? Um, I would I would say so, um, and not just because that's my life uh, right now. Um, but um, that when you go through, um, so a, a planner or a designer um, who works with communities typically has to go through an RFP RFQ process, which we're probably all familiar mm -hmm. with, and those are increasingly including um, an online engagement <coughs> requirement of their consultant. Uh, so they are recognizing or um, they're either going to do it or they're going to get left behind. Um, another um, response to that is that you're going to be dealing with the community at some point along the development process. Um, you can either do it at the beginning or you can do it at the end. Um, Wolf Point, I don't know if folks are familiar with that project, it's just outside the window here. Um, I, I know most of those involved um, on the development side, and they're great people. Um, but I would um, encourage them to start out earlier with the public instead of having to have waited so long in the process, so long so that the community felt left out. And the community went, uh, the River Road community went and hired their own set of consultants from a legal team to a planning team to a traffic, uh, traffic engineering team to review. The, the developers' claims on this would happen or this would not happen, and ended up selling the project for a long time. And only just here recently have we seen shovels digging into the ground. Mm -hmm. The property's been sitting there waiting for 20 years. Every day that goes by where you're paying consultancy and you're not developing the property to purchase. Um, so that's, okay, that's very interesting. So in, in, Definitely, in some parts of Chicago, there are very engaged publics around the use of public space. But yeah. certainly, in other parts of Chicago, there's one person who is the public, and that is the alderman. Yeah. Does this process? How does that like? Yeah. So, um, in some neighborhoods, um, aldermen aldermanic votes are coming down to people that are only winning by 100 or so votes. Um, if an aldermanic candidate wants to do something positive in the neighborhood, they do something like this, they get the public engaged and prove that they care and they're interested in it. Have you seen that use where uh, elected officials actually, uh, the uh, users instead of the targets of this, of this thing? 
Um, I would, uh, yes, we have some coming. Um, I, I can't speak to those, but uh, what I said about uh, what happened in Sleepy Little Playfield, about how we, we were not congratulated, the, those viewing at, from home on cameras were um, being congratulated <coughs> during election season with their awarding. Um, so that, that, that would be those two. I mean, for the public's point of view, they're not paying us. We, we did dabble with crowdfunding for a little bit, but I don't know if too far. Maybe. Um, but for them, it's seeing their the value of their neighborhood. Um, really, you have to, it, it sounds kind of selfish, but talking about property value is important. That really resonates with people. Um, whether it increases or decreases or stays the same, people are interested. And that has to do with the gentrification and all these other words that get them. People like to feel that they have some sort of control, and they don't put up with the meaning. That's for sure. I have that in my experience. Some do, most don't. Okay, well, uh, thanks, Zach. This is great. Thank you. Yeah, by the way, this is, look out the window. This is the wolf point. This is us, and this little guy. <laughs>